Hi Founder fans, Jason here, and today's founder is Robert Livingston, the Chancellor. Now I'm a little bit surprised I haven't spoken about Robert Livingston yet because he was so significant to the revolution and to New York itself and to the United States as we will get to. So, I do want to mention I have spoken about several members of the Livingston family because the Livingston family was a large family that was very important to the American Revolution. But as for Robert himself, he was named after several generation of Robert Livingston's in the Livingston family history. But he was still just 29 when he was sent to the Second Continental Congress. He had always been a bit louder than many other people when it came to anger at the king in Parliament. But when he was sent to the Second Continental Congress, he became an early advocate for independence. In fact, when the committee was created to draft a Declaration of Independence, that committee had five people on it. The other four all would sign the Declaration of Independence. John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Ben Franklin, and Roger Sherman. Robert Livingston, who was also on that committee and there for the vote to become independent in July of 1776, he was recalled over the summer before the document was actually signed, so he did not get his signature on there, though his cousin Philip did, so it's fine. But Robert was called back to New York City, to New York State because they had to write a new constitution. And Robert Livingston helped write that new constitution. And when that constitution was created, Robert Livingston was chosen as the first chancellor of New York State. Now, chancellor is a position that no longer exists in New York State, so it's a little bit hard to describe exactly. Uh, but essentially, it was there was a chancellor, court of chancery, and a Supreme Court in New York. The Court of Chancery focused more on equity matters, which, for lack of a better term, is, is financial matters, and the Supreme Court was essentially everything else. However, the Court of Chancery was also the highest appellate court, so if something went to the Supreme Court and someone wanted to appeal it, it would go to the Court of Chancery. And Robert uh, Livingston, as the chairman of the Court of Chancery, or the Chancellor, was in charge of overseeing these. And he held this position for 25 years, from seven, or 24 years technically, but a quarter of a century, from 1707, 1777 until 1781, during which both New York and the United States were formed. Now, he did spend about a year and a half during this time concurrently serving as uh, Minister Secretary to Foreign Affairs for the Continental Congress. Uh, under the Articles of Confederation. He was the first Secretary of Foreign Affairs in the history of the United States. Now, a few years later, the Constitution is written, and George Washington becomes president and goes to New York City, where the first capital was. And Robert Livingston, living in New York City, was the one who g administered the oath of office to George Washington when he first took over as the first president of the United States. Such was the weight of Robert Livingston's respect that was held among the community in his state and others. Now by this time, Robert Livingston was essentially known as the Chancellor. In fact, he would be, for the, his entire life, would be called Chancellor Livingston. But Chancellor Livingston, when he res resigned as Chancellor in 1801, he was immediately appointed by, at this point, President Thomas Jefferson, who he, you know, helped write the declaration with 25 years beforehand, Thomas Jefferson appointed Robert Livingston to go to France as a minister to France, and he did. And while he was there, he worked with uh, not so famous quite yet James Monroe to, uh, oh yeah, negotiate the Louisiana Purchase. And he's the one who organized and oversaw the treaty that brought, that doubled the size of the United States. And he does have a famous quote I want to read to you. That, uh, it's a pretty famous quote uh, from that day where after he signed that treaty he said we have lived long but this is the noblest work of our whole lives the united states takes the united states takes rank this day among the first powers of the world and it really was a far seeing statement because yeah the the fact that the united states would grow so large so quickly definitely would help over the course of its history Bring it up as one of the foremost powers in the entire world. Livingston wasn't done yet, though. Oh, no. Livingston, while he was in France, became friends with uh, uh, a man named Robert Fulton. And he and Fulton got along swimmingly, and Fulton was creating a steam-powered boat. A steamboat. 
And when the two men came back to the United States, uh, Robert Livingston funded the first steamboats built in the United States. And the first boat, its maiden voyage, was from New York to Albany. And right in the middle of New York and Albany on the Hudson was a house called Claremont that was owned by who else? Robert Livingston. And this became, his home became the first home port of a steamboat in North America. And just to put some perspective, the steamboat on its maiden voyage was able to travel from New York City to Albany in about two and a half days. And this is reduced from six days. That doesn't, may not sound like a lot when you can drive from New York to Albany in about two and a half hours nowadays, but at the time, this was an amazing change of time to get from one place to another. And because of this, both uh, Livingston and Fulton joined the original board of the Erie Canal Commission, and they helped start the digging for the Erie Canal because now that they had the steamboats, this was a viable option. Erie Canal comes along and suddenly farmers growing crops in the Midwest can get those crops to the Great Lakes straight across New York, straight down the Hudson to New York City where it can be traded around the world. And this is what made New York City, which was already one of the bigger cities in the young nation uh, and would was quickly becoming a very important port on the world stage. This gave New York City access to a, a humongous variety of crops that would be sold worldwide with the Erie Canal and Hudson River becoming essentially the first super highway in the United States, with both people going out and products coming back. And because of this work, New York City became what it is today, and because New York City becoming such an economic powerhouse, it helped the United States become a powerhouse. So Robert Livingston not only helped fight, create the United States, but he helped actually build it as an economic super power. So I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little bit longer than most of my videos, but Robert Livingston is an essential American revolutionary. And I can't believe it took me almost a year to make a video about him. So thank you for watching. Make sure you hit like and subscribe because there are lots of random founders I talk about a lot also. And that's what took me so long getting to Robert Livingston. Uh, thank you again for watching and I will be back with another founder tomorrow.